Hello, uh, my name is uh, David Khan Chokan, and I'm coming from Middle East Technical University in Ankara, Turkey. This actually this presentation was going to be given by the student, master student, Emre Özasan, but he couldn't make it here. Uh, so I will be presenting his work here. Uh, it's basically a first part of a study on uh, open hole strength and composite materials. Uh, we're going to show some experiment results on stress concentration and stress prediction of uh, CFRP composite plates uh, with holes. Uh, the outline, I'll have an introduction uh, and uh, the outline of the study is that we characterized the composite material, uh, showed open hole test uh, specimens, uh, do a finite element model and show you some results before making concluding remarks. Uh, okay, everybody knows about composite materials used in the aerospace industry. That's, that's what I'm interested in. And uh, there are many uh, design methods, and one of the methods is for open hole uh, composite materials. So this is uh, just the first part of trying to understand what's going on what's happening in composite materials when we uh, want to design for uh, airspace structures. Uh, composite materials compared to homogeneous materials uh, uh, complicate issues uh, due to the uh, inclusion of matrix and fiber. Uh, fiber basically carries the most of the load and it creates a heterogeneity which causes the uh, change in the stress concentration factor near the holes and creates uh, size effects. Um, so uh, these, uh, these plies with fibers and matrix are, are laid up in different directions to form a structure. And when you put a hole in them, they cause different behavior than homogeneous materials. Uh, we look at the stress concentration. Um, the stress concentration factor is the maximum stress divided by the uniform stress, uh, which reduces the overall loading capacity. For homogeneous materials, it's usually three, four, but for composite materials, uh, depending on the layout and the size, the size effect, uh, the stress concentration factor changes. So this is basically the first uh, study on uh, on uh, looking at the stress concentration factor uh, with size in composite materials. Uh, and then the next step is to model this uh, using uh, methods like paradynamics, of course, uh, what's my area of course zone modeling and fatigue failure, uh, failure models, composite failure models. So the objective in this presentation is to study the stress concentration factor uh, experimentally and strength, how it changes with uh, different W uh, uh, width over diameter ratio and then keeping the width over diameter constant but changing the size. Um, so we just want to look at that experimentally. So uh, as a first part of this study, we took material which, uh, which is this uh, UD carbon epoxy and we carried out uh, characterization experiments, uh, determined the stiffnesses and the strengths uh, of the ply. But what we're interested in is this layup uh, that we use in uh, practical applications actually. This is what we're interested in. And we had a test configuration, a test matrix, open hole tension specimens, uh, six of them. Uh, basically, we had the same width and changed uh, the diameter of the hole. And then, uh, for a ratio of uh, six uh, for the second one, uh, we changed the size. So we also changed the size, kept the W over D the same. Um, we did a finite element model, very simple finite elastic uh, model, uh, where we uh, 
use this symmetric and balanced stacking sequence and model one fourth of the specimen with the hole uh, with symmetric conditions on both sides and pulled it in this direction to determine the stress, uh, stress concentration uh, with size for this layer. Okay, so we can, uh, before we get on to results, we also looked at the, we used the point stress criterion developed by Whitney and Nussmuir in 1974 to predict the strength of the open hole specimens from an elastic analysis. Basically, this uh, point stress criteria uh, says that the final failure of the open hole specimen occurs when the stress at a certain distance from the hole, uh, the cap which is the characteristic distance d0, reaches the unlocked specimen strength. So we determine the total uh, average stress uh, based on this for each case. So we need the unlocked specimen strength for this, uh, which, uh, which we have determined. And when we look at finite element analysis for different WD ratios, uh, the stress concentration factor, uh, as we reduce the W over D, uh, goes from 3, which is our standard uh, stress concentration factor for the whole, uh, and rises significantly. So the laminate uh, behaves as an infinite width plate until uh, 6, when WD ratio equals 6. But below this value, uh, laminate behaves as a finite width plate. So our unlocked specimen strength, uh, we did test load versus displacement, so this is reverse. And uh, we compared it for our finite element analysis, which is not bad, uh, which is a, we've uh, obtained a stiffness from the ply properties. And uh, we have an average unlocked laminate strength of 440 MPa. So that's our sigma zero. We rejected the failed specimens that near the grips. Uh, we only took the gate section failure specimens. Okay. So, um, so for, uh, for one case, specimen OHT2, for one specimen case, uh, we did a stress analysis for this width uh, to diameter ratio. And for a 440 MPa uh, average stress, we found uh, the characteristic strength to be 1.86 MPa and the average stress to be 306 MPa. So although most specimen strengths were calculated with PSC using uh, D0 and sigma 0 values, and our first result uh, for different WD ratios, we obtained uh, for laminate strength, the average laminate strength increases as we change W over D ratio. Uh, when, we inc uh, when we quadruple the ratio from 3 to 12, the failure strength rose 62%. Uh, the PAC method, also shown by the green dots, uh, were very good actually, calculating the average laminate strength with the procedure I outlined before, with an 80% error. So this is very nice, this is very good. Uh, when we changed, uh, when we looked at the same WD ratio for different specimen sizes, it decreases. And the specimen with an old diameter doubled when we make a bigger specimen. The specimen failure strength uh, dropped from 13%. Again, the PSC method does a good job in predicting this with a 5% error. So these are all observations. Uh, there's no physics involved in this. But uh, we need this data uh, for later. So in concluding uh, conclusions, the stress concentration factor in this experimental work uh, increases by 15% as we change the WD ratio from 63. Final failure is increased by 60 percent when we change the size of the material composite specimen. 
Um, final failure can be reduced by 13% by doubling both W and W over D uh, because of the size effect. And uh, the PSC method uh, is, is a good way to predict this. And that concludes my talk. Uh, in the future, uh, this will be used for modeling. And uh, thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, almost five minutes. So I would suggest uh, broken the rule. Uh, one short question, if somebody asks. Actually, fractional mechanics on peridynamic modeling of laminations and specimens. So, so that's uh, be my. Okay. Uh, just one short question. Yes. So, would be these composites material solution for the bridges in the future? Like in general, what will happen? Yeah. It will be made by composite. I think there's a lot of interest in that. Uh, there's one way of strengthening bridges is by adapting them to composite. And buildings also, uh, there's some work on that for uh, defending against earthquakes. Yes. And, and it seems to be successful. Okay. Uh, if they shake and if you prevent the shear, which, uh, which with these composite wrapping, you can do that, mm -hmm. it strengthens the bridge yeah. and the structures. Especially if the corrosion resistance is very high. Yes. yes. And, uh, Probably yeah. it's a hot topic right now. That's right, that's right. Listen, of course. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.